A farmer understands the needs of every season, and so do Farm Bureau members. When Arkansas families needed electricity, our members brought it. Reliable roads, our members built them. The agricultural education, our members provided. Today's members may not live on a farm, but their connections are as close as ever. So when that difficult season comes, no member has to face it alone. For every season, Arkansas Farm Bureau. Join today. Now you move to a phase where there's going to be a lot of what's called integrity testing of the pipeline. Kind of walk me through a little bit of what happens with integrity testing and how long could that take? Um, we are getting ready to submit a remedial work plan to PHMSA, uh, the regulatory agency who um, oversees pipelines in the U.S. That plan is due to them by April 7th, so we will be submitting that plan by that timeline. Before I talk about the remedial work plan, we might want to talk about the investigation, which sure. leads, to the, leads to the response that we'll take. So um, over the past months, we've worked very hard to determine what happened in this failed section of pipe. Um, I appreciate the patience that people have given us because it's not been a short time frame for this investigation. And what I'd like to tell you and what we can confirm is that we've completed our detailed investigation and we've confirmed that the factors that resulted in the failure of the pipeline in Mayflower, Arkansas are one, an original manufacturing defect that was created when the seam pipe was manufactured mm -hmm. combined with um, extreme metallurgical properties. And, and let me speak to that a minute. Um, extreme metallurgical properties uh, can be a lot of things. So when you think about materials in general, not just pipe, they have different characteristics. Um, on one end, if you think about glass, it's very hard, it does not bend. On another end, you might think about rubber that bends, is malleable. Materials are along that spectrum when you think about hardness and toughness. Pipe should be somewhere in the middle. In fact, you may not think about it, but pipe actually bends a little bit. So if you picture a weightlifter with heavy weights on each side and he's lifting that weight, you can actually visualize the bar bending over. That's the property that we would expect pipe to have. When we investigated this joint that failed in Mayflower, the chemical makeup of that joint was different than we have ever seen. We wanted time to investigate that chemical makeup and, and understand what it meant. PHMSA approved us taking more time to do that. And what we've learned that in fact that pipe has higher quantities of sulfur, manganese, and carbon than we've ever seen in a joint of pipe. Why do you think that is? We talked to an industry expert. Um, we took advantage of global experts for ExxonMobil, but in addition to that, we brought in a gentleman named Dr. John Kiefner. He is the foremost expert on pipe integrity, and we talked to him about that very question. What's going on with this joint of pipe? Um, Dr. Kiefner confirmed for us that he has never seen the combination of extreme properties that we observed in this pipe, and he has looked at hundreds of samples of seamed pipe in his work. Um, he's been in pipeline integrity for decades and brings a wealth of experience and knowledge to the table. So when we looked at this pipe and asked ourselves, where did this pipe come from? We looked at the manufacturing process. We know this pipe was manufactured a long time ago. Um, and in that process, we suspect that something in the chemistry was not uniform. It wasn't mixed well. We can only speculate. There are no records that confirm exactly how this joint was made. That should give you confidence that you've isolated the problem, but maybe a lack of confidence that this could be in other parts of the pipeline, couldn't it? That's what we had to follow up on. What we did was test not only the joint that failed, but the joints on either side. So we actually excavated and cut out pieces of pipe that adjoining, adjoined the failed segment. Those segments did not exhibit these properties because it might be um, a natural thought pattern to say if you have one joint here, all the joints along that segment are, are going to exhibit those same properties. We did not find that. So what we've done is put together a remedial work plan that will address the learnings of the investigation. And what that plan looks like, it's a layered approach. I call it a holistic approach to look at the pipeline integrity and it combines multiple factors. The first is 
taking the data from the inline inspection tool that was run prior to the failure, taking that raw data, analyzing it, and addressing any anomaly that is shown in that data. Addressing an anomaly means we'll go to the field, we'll dig up that piece of pipe, we'll do in-the-ditch testing to assess if it's uh, of concern. Um, in addition to that, we're going to be testing for metallurgical properties. So to your point, how will you know if you have another piece of pipe that demonstrates those chemical properties? For every dig that we do to verify the tool run, we're tests for those metallurgical properties. That's the, that's the first step. After we do all those repairs, um, we'll, we will also address the raw data itself from the tool run. What's important about that is that we use the most advanced algorithms to analyze that data and assess where the pipe could have these original manufacturing defects. I'll tell you that progress has been made in recent times on the ability to analyze that raw data, both in industry and since our event in Mayflower, a lot of focus has been put on it. We have worked with experts on it. Third parties have brought technology to the table, and we believe significant advancements have taken place. So we'll, we'll do the repairs, if necessary, for all of those locations. We will conduct a third party analysis, which is well underway on the raw data of this tool run. After we complete that, we will also do a hydro test. What's unique about this hydro test that we're proposing in the remedial work plan is that it's called a spike hydro test. So we're actually going to take the pipe up to 1.39 times the maximum operating pressure that we anticipate running. And what that does is it, it actually stresses the pipe to reveal any weak points. The purpose of a spike hydro test is to reveal and eliminate any of these weak original manufacturing defects that could ultimately be an integrity problem for you. Safe to assume this is the first type of defect, burst, problem that you've encountered in your tenure that kind of speaks to these characteristics. You've never seen anything like this before, have you? Correct. We have not seen anything like this and industry has not seen anything like and this. And that's your reason for precaution? That is our reason for precaution. I mean, we, we took months to analyze the data. Uh, we wanted to make sure we understood what happened. Part of that analysis was eliminating other potential contributing factors. So during that time, we looked at uh, internal corrosion, external corrosion, we looked at external forces, and were able through metallurgical testing to eliminate any of those potential contributing factors. Um, the testing that we're proposing, the spike hydro test, um, is PHMSA's recommended approach. We have not done a spike hydro test on this pipeline. It will be testing the pipeline beyond what it's ever been tested before. Once we complete that spike hydro test, we'll back it down to what's considered a normal hydro test, which is more of just a strength test, which is 1.25 times the operating pressure. But, but the, the strength test is the normal test. This spike test is what's new and different for this pipeline, which is designed to reveal any flaws, eliminate them, or confirm that none exist there. How long could all of this testing take place? And I guess to the context of that question, how long could this pipeline remain not in use while you do this testing? The remedial work plan that we're proposing will take some time to execute. First of all, we've got to do the digs, the testing in the ditch, any repair that is necessary, and then the hydrostatic testing. So we anticipate it will take a minimum of a year. Mm -hmm. So you've been without the pipeline for a year. You could be without the pipeline for another year while you test. Do you still need this pipeline? We think the pipeline is a very valuable asset. Um, I think for the country, moving hydrocarbons around is important for our lifestyles that we enjoy, and pipelines are a safe way to do that. The Pegasus pipeline runs from Illinois to southern Texas. It brings crude from a production facility to where the heart of the refineries are. So it, it's, a, it's an asset that is um, 
key to the infrastructure that we have. It, it, it moves hydrocarbons from one place to a place where they can be turned into a usable product. So yes, we, we anticipate a, a use for the pipeline and a need for the pipeline. Obviously a big question for central Arkansas residents, business leaders, community leaders is, is there any possibility that this pipeline is moved out of the watershed? Is there any possibility that this pipeline does not get reactivated? I would hate to speculate on next steps. I think the remedial work plan that we have proposed is thorough, holistic approach. And what I'll tell you is that when we execute that remedial work plan, we will repair, reinforce, or replace the pipe as necessary to ensure the integrity of the pipeline. You want it to reopen, but the possibility does remain that it may not reopen. If FEMSA doesn't approve your remedial plan or if the tests prove that it's not up to capability or do you just replace what needs to be replaced in hopes that you can reopen it? We won't restart the pipeline without FEMSA approval and without convincing ourselves that we can safely do that.